This is a video about cash flow for GCSE business studies. So businesses need to make sure that they can survive. They need to compete with other businesses, of course make a profit and of course meet customer needs. But it can be a little bit more complicated than that because you need to make sure that your cash flow is managed in order for your business to survive. So your business requires cash inflows. It might be funding and it might be selling an item which might be clothes. So you need to have funding to buy the materials for the clothes and then hopefully you sell your clothes for more than you bought the materials for and have a profit. You need to have a plan. So that's a business plan moving forward to make sure that you've always got money in the bank. Your margin is the difference between the materials that you use to make your clothes and the price you sell them at. But you need to make sure you never run out of money in your bank. This is called cash flow. So here we have an inflow and a bath representing cash in the business. You might think of it as cash in a bank account and you have outflows. So an extreme example might be a company that makes a profit on everything they sell but actually have to service a very expensive loan so they don't have enough cash in the business to keep going. So going back to a clothes example, you'd need to buy materials to make clothes. This costs money, so your cash in the business goes down. When you sell the clothes, you have a cash inflow for the money received for selling the clothes. And you'd hope that your inflow the amount you sell your clothes for is greater than the outflow, the amount of money you spend on the materials. However, your outflow could also be for some loans you've taken out. And that could mean the outflow is larger than the inflow. That would mean the cash in the business gets less and less. And ultimately, if the cash in the business is less than zero, the company wouldn't be able to afford to pay back the interest on their loan and perhaps more importantly, they wouldn't be able to pay for the materials to make more clothes. So if they don't manage the cash within their business, ultimately they won't have a business anymore. Because if you're not able to pay for the materials for the clothes you're going to make and sell, you don't have a business any longer. So this is what we mean when we're saying a business is responsible for paying their costs. You have to pay your staff. You have to pay for materials, you have to pay your bills. There's a hierarchy of the different bills you have to pay, and probably at the top is the taxman, and the taxman will demand payment, and you have to pay them. And the surprising thing is that suppliers are not necessarily at the top where the taxman is, they're slightly lower, and you might be able to do things like delay payments to your suppliers. So suppliers within a clothing company would be the people who provide the material for the clothes. So we can go into that in a bit more detail when we think about methods for increasing cash flow. So you might try to cut costs. That might mean laying off staff. It's difficult to do, but it might be possible. Second one, destocking, is where you're selling the items you've already got made and don't create necessarily new ones to sell. So if you think of a clothes manufacturer, they'll make the clothes and they'll have some stock for big orders. You could just sell that without creating new clothes. It's destocking, so having less and less stock. So you're selling them without necessarily having to pay lots of money to create that stock because you already have it. The third one's delaying payments to suppliers. So you might say, we're not going to pay for our material for an extra month. Suppliers might not like that and might even stop supplying you, but it's an option. You could also reduce credit offered to customers, which is kind of the opposite of the delaying payment suppliers. So your customers, you might say you have 10 days or a week to pay. You can give them longer than that and often companies do. So we're not necessarily talking about customers in the high street, we're talking about selling to shops. So you give a shop 
say 30 days to pay for the clothes that they're going to sell. You could reduce that and say you've only got a week or less. So when we're thinking of increasing cash flow methods, then destocking is a good way, getting rid of the existing stock and selling it for money. This leads to increased revenue. So your revenue is increased and there isn't the usual corresponding increase in costs. So as a result, you have a greater cash inflow and your cash in the business is going up, it's increasing. You might want to do this because you need to manage your cash flow to make sure that the money in the bank, the money in the business, never gets down to zero or to a negative number so you can always pay your bills. So you might want to increase your cash flow by destocking when you know you're going to have something you're going to have to pay for which is extremely expensive. Uh, big retailers often have this, they have to pay their rent, I think it's every six months. So every six months they need to have lots of cash in order to pay their next rent. So they might use destocking and lots of major companies which have got into trouble, trouble thinking the computer game store game, British home stores, they undertook destocking to try to m meet the rent payments so they didn't become bankrupt, become insolvent. And what the best way of doing that might be destocking because you've already got the things there to destock. You don't have to say lay off staff, which might take time and might actually make your cash flow worse in the short term. Because if you make someone redundant, you have to give them redundancy payments. Destocking, you might already have the stock there and you can just sell it. In the long term, you might not want to do it, of course, because in the long term, you need more stock to sell. In the short term, though, it might decrease your problems. So your costs. You might have fixed costs like rents or salary, and they're always paid even if you don't sell anything. So extreme examples are you might have an ice cream business and you don't sell a great deal during the winter, and they'll have the same staff costs as in the summer if you're producing the ice cream and you might notice in clothes not many shorts are sold in the winter if your company is only manufacturing shorts you still need to pay your fixed costs variable costs are dependent on the amount of things that you you produce so in this case you're thinking raw materials if i'm not making a pair of shorts then i don't have to pay for the materials to make it because I'm not making those shorts. Those are variable costs. You need to make sure you're covering these costs because if not, you don't have money in the bank, you can't cover your bills. And we've talked about extreme short-term actions in that you might have destocking. So here's a more concrete example. You might have a business it's got an opening bank balance of £2,000. So they've got £2,000 to pay those bills, pay the things they need to. They have an income of £500, expenditure of £1,500, all of this in January. So you can see they're running down the amount of money they'd have in the bank. So they can't afford to keep doing that. So what they really need to do is to make sure that their expenditure is decreased and their income is increased. And you'll see in February they've done that. Their income increases to £750, the expenditure decreases. This means they're kind of on a par, they're not running down the amount of money that they have in the bank. So their closing balance is 1000 which then goes up to March and their opening bank balance is 1000 And in this March, they increase their income again, so perhaps selling more things to get a thousand pounds in, and their expenditure is just seven hundred and fifty pounds. So their closing balance is one thousand two hundred and fifty. We could assume in January they took some action to make their expenditure decrease and for their income to increase. So how could they do that? They could lay off a member of staff, they could engage in some destocking. And their incomes increased, so they're selling more items. Maybe they changed the price point they're selling their clothes at. And this has meant they're not running down what's in their bank, so they're kind of better off. So they'll be able to keep this business going for many more months, you would hope, because they're actually starting to increase the amount of money in their bank account. So they're better off in terms of cash flow. 
So here's a graph that represents cash flow and we compare it to time. So you receive an order and you purchase materials which cost you money. You receive say a big order, your clothing manufacturer and a supermarket wants to buy 100 pairs of shorts. You buy materials and you have to pay wages for this time and it takes time to make the clothes. It could take two months. If it's a large order it could take six months. You deliver your order to the customer but only when it's delivered and the customer's happy do you receive payment which becomes profit. So you'll see in terms of cash flow it's actually negative for quite some time before there's a payment from the customer and it turns into profit. So during this time companies might need to take if they've not planned ahead a loan to make sure that they can still pay the wages because as you see they don't have money coming in for some time until they have payment from a customer.